welcome back to Night Nurse, my lovers of learning. I'm Professor Burns, and today we're going to begin to talk about specific immunity. So specific immunity involves the B's and T's. So remember that nonspecific or innate immunity was inflammation. It didn't really know what it was attacking. It just knew that there was injury, some sort of injury or, or damage from ischemia or physical damage. It didn't matter. That brought in, brought in the phagocytes. It brought in increased vascular permeability, inflammation, and the removal of the foreign debris, of, or of the debris, I should say. <clears throat> so when we talk about specific immunity or adaptive immunity, we have some significant changes and more complexity. Sp- so specific immunity... There, we have a specific invader that is identified, removed, and remembered for subsequent exposures to make the immune system work better next time. So first, the body has to recognize foreign material. Then it has to respond. It responds two ways through lymphocyte classes B cell, that's antibody production or humoral immunity, and through T cells, which destroy cells that have been infected, host cells that have been infected. And then finally, the foreign invader is remembered through the making of memory cells. So that way, subsequent responses are enhanced, they're quicker, and they're more efficient. This is the rationale for immunizations and the rationale for protection through natural immunity, which we will talk about. So specific adaptive immunity begins at the end of inflammation. So we have an antigen-presenting cell, normally a macrophage or one of the phagocytes. It engulfs foreign material, and it recognizes that this material is foreign material, so it needs to share it with the specific immune systems. So it's engulfed, it's presented to the lymphocytes, the Bs and Ts, and this initiates specific or adaptive immunity. The lymphocytes that are involved in specific immunity are the B cells, or humoral immunity. Humor means in the blood, so B cell humoral immunity makes antibodies, also known as immunoglobulins, also known as IgG's, but they're all the same thing. So the B cells make antibodies that are in the blood. That's why it's called humoral immunity. The T cells are cell mediated. So T cells go door to door attacking and destroying any infected or compromised cells for a specific invader. So let's do specific immunity a little bit play by play so you can see it visually. So we get our phagocytes engulfing antigens during non-specific inflammatory immunity. Okay, so okay, we got it. So here's some antigens. Most of the antigens are our own. So uh, if they're recognized by the immune system as being ours, then they're tolerated and no immune response is, is conducted. However, if the macrophages engulf foreign proteins, then this actually activates, they present them as the antigen presenting cell to this specific immune system. So typically we think of this as starting with the B cells. It can start with the Bs or the Ts, but but so we, we typically think of it starting with the B cells. So you have uh, the foreign antigen being, ex- being shown to the B cells and the B cells proliferate making antibodies to that specific foreign protein. Now, these antibodies will then go out into the bloodstream, they'll bind to these foreign antigens, and they'll activate complement, and that causes antigen destruction through phagocytosis and inflammation. Now, some of these cells are preserved. Some of these antibodies are preserved as blueprints so that the next time we encounter this foreign antigen, then the immune system can work a little more efficiently. Next, cytokines activate T cell specialization to the specific foreign proteins. Now, T cells go door to door and they destroy cells that present the foreign antigen on the surface. If a virus or other type of infective agent infects a cell, a host cell, then it will pre- it will put foreign 
receptors on the outside of the cell to let other viruses know, hey, I've got this cell, it's already infected. So our T cells have to go door to door and they look for that foreign cell receptor and they bind to it and that initiates apoptosis and cellular destruction. There are lots of different types of T cells, right? There are T helper cells, T memory cells, T suppressor cells, cytotoxic T cells, and and um, the most important one is the T helper CD4 positive cell. The T helper cell is involved in all aspects of immunity, and what it does is it secretes cytokines, which are chemical messengers that then activate and and stir up B cell proliferation more T-cell proliferation, and it even stimulates and fires up the phagocytes in innate inflammatory immunity. So the T-helper cell is key to all aspects of immunity. Now, let's talk about the lymphocytes a little bit more in detail. So we, let's talk with the, with the B-cells. So the B-cells are humoral immunity because the antibodies are made in the blood. It gets B because it's, it matures in the bone marrow. And it produces our antibodies, our immunoglobulins. There are specific immunoglobulins that do different things, but they're specific to a a particular antibody or to a specific protein. So IgG, IgM, IgE, we'll talk about these. And when the B cell is producing immunoglobulin antibodies, it gets a new fancy name called a plasma cell. But don't let that scare you. That's just a B cell that is proliferating and making immunoglobulins. B lymphocytes are effective against bacteria and viruses when they're outside of the host cell because the immunoglobulins are going into the blood. The B cell memory cell is uh, creates a blueprint copy for future encounters, and it activates immunoglobulin production at a much faster rate and uh, with... with uh, 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 not only is it faster, but it's more profound on the secondary exposure. And this is the rationale for protection through immunizations and and natural immunity. The family of immunoglobulins include IgM, which is the first responder, the first time you ever encounter an antigen, a foreign protein. Uh, It'll be an IgM response. And it's big. It looks like a wagon wheel. It's a pentameter. It's got uh, uh, five areas of the ability to bind on it. IgG is this is small and it's the most abundant immunoglobulin that we have. It crosses the placenta, so mothers can give IgG immunity uh, to their unborn baby, um, and it's also pivotal in the secondary response. IgE binds and activates eosinophils and mast cell degranulation. When you think of mast cell degranulation, you just need to think of Uh, breaking open a mast cell and releasing histamine. So IgE and eosinophils are big in what's is are big in what's called the type 1 hypersensitivity or allergic hypersensitivity, which we'll see in a subsequent lecture. IgA, especially IgA2, is bound to secretions and uh, and it's found in the colostrum for newborns. Now, IgG and IgM are large activators of complement, remember? So if you get an antigen antibody complex binding together, then that activates complement and that induces inflammation and phagocytosis. So you can see that immunity uh, is a continuum. It all works together. It helps, you know, so so specific immunity eventually involves non-specific inflammatory immunity to help get the job done. Now, primary and secondary immune responses of antibodies are different. So first, let's identify a titer. A titer is that just a diagnostic measure of an antibody of immunoglobulins that you have in your blood. So it just measures immunity to a specific antigen. That's all it means. Do you have measles titers? Were your titers high enough for hepatitis B? If they were, that says that you have immunity, either through, uh, either through having the disease in the past or through, uh, through vaccination. So when we look at the primary immune response with an initial exposure, we get somewhat of a delay in initial response because the body, it's new to it, so the B cells kind of have to decide what they're going to do and and create immunoglobulins. And they will create antibodies and release antibodies, and they're mainly IgM. 
and then remember we have memory T, we have memory B cells, and what that helps with is that in the secondary response, we get a much more profound response, and you'll notice it comes on sooner. So it's faster and more profound. And the secondary response mainly involves IgG. So primary response, the first one, just like the beginning of the day, begins with morning. The first response in immunity begins with IgM. Then the secondary response is much more profound, it's faster, and it's IgG. This is the rationale for when they say that you have protection through natural immunity or through vaccination because you have titers. Now, so you have IgG floating around in the blood and a foreign invader and comes up. So it's, it's, it has foreign antigens, so the IgG grabs to it and causes a, an antibody, causes an antigen antibody complex to activate phagocytosis and get rid of it through complement. Boom, it's gone. All right, that's great. Um, however, sometimes that foreign invader will get into the cell. Now, once it gets into the cell, then the immunoglobulin's like, hey, where'd it go? I don't see it anymore. It's not in the blood. So humoral immunity can't be the only form of specific immunity. This is why we have T-cell cell-mediated immunity. So let's talk about that now. So we talked about B-cell, humoral immunity. Let's transition to T-cell immunity, cell-mediated. So T-cells mature in the thymus. That's how it gets its name, T-cell. And T-cells seek out foreign antigens on the cell surface of host cells to destroy all cells that have a foreign antigen through initiating apoptosis, basically telling the cell, you've got to go. It's effective against virus-infected cells, fungal infections, cancer cells, anaplasia, and transplanted tissue, which we'll see in a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction in a subsequent video. Family of T-cells include T-killer or cytotoxic cells, they're CD8, and they release enzymes to initiate uh, 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 cellular destruction or they activate complement. We have natural killer cells, and we have the most important one, the CD4 T-helper cell. Now, the T-helper cell coordinates all aspects of immunity. It is crucial in B, T, and phagocyte macrophage activation. So it's very important that we have that cell, and that comes into play when we talk about <clears throat> when we talk about uh, immunodeficiency. So if we have the combined uh, uh, B and T cells, then that is what we call specific or adaptive immunity: B cell humoral in the blood and T cell uh, cell mediated. Now. Acquired immunity can be acquired two different ways, and they're quite different, active or passive. Now, active immunity is when the immune system of the host is actually activated to make its own antibodies. So we see this, for example, with natural active when you naturally encounter the disease and you're infected. That's called natural immunity, okay? You can also get it through artificial active immunity um, when you get B and T cell activation by vaccination. Either way, the immune system responds with a threat to the antigen and it creates Bs and Ts and therefore you get memory Bs and Ts. So you're set up to have that, that secondary immune response with quicker and more profound IgG release the next time that you encounter the foreign invader. Now, passive immunity is when the immune system is not activated to make antibodies. There is no adaptive response. Therefore, there are no long-lasting memory cells. So, no antibodies produced, no immune system, no immune memory. So, once the immunoglobulin has been cleared, from the blood, there is no immunity. But there are times that this is important, that we want to have passive immunity. One is in natural passive. So when the baby is first born, or even before the baby's born, you have IgG transfer from the mother uh, uh, through the placenta so the baby has some immunity to the world. And then also through the colostrum of the breast milk and in breast milk, there are lots of antibodies that the mother uh, gives the child and that helps protect the baby until 
uh, the immune system can get up and running and create its own active immunity. We also have artificial passive in situations where we don't have time to wait. So if you're, if you're, you know, if you're a black mambo or a rattlesnake bites you, you don't have days to start making antibodies to that venom. So you're given anti-venom. Other examples are rabies, rogam. For COVID, we had bamlanivimab. Those were the antibodies, the monoclonal antibodies that actually um, go out and find the foreign antigen invader and uh, act to bind the the uh, antigen antibody complex so the immune system can activate even though the body hasn't made its own antibodies yet. So in passive immunity, since there are no antibodies produced by the body, there once once it's cleared, once that immunoglobulin has been cleared through the liver, then uh, there is no long-lasting immunity. So the patient, again, becomes naive to that illness. So we've covered natural, or we've covered, we've covered uh, inflammatory innate immunity that just attacks anything um, and helps clear and heal the body. We've talked about adaptive immunity, both, P, both Bs and T cells, and how they use the inflammatory process to help them as well. Um, So next, we will talk about some abnormal immune responses in the next video, um, when things don't go exactly the way they're supposed to go. So thank you very much for listening and watching the video. Um, If you'd enjoyed it, please uh, subscribe to the Night Nurse Learning Channel. Um, Also, um, I'm always building new content and adding new content at nightnurse.com. Thank you very much.